Yeah. It's <laughs> Monday, May 13th, and apparently that was giggle -worthy. I hope Cameron is watching this. I do too. Cameron, we're hoping you're not completely dead. Cameron, I love you. Well, I can't. I don't feel the same way, Cameron, but I do hope you come back. Uh, hey. We'll try not to make it too creepy. That's... Hopefully your day of service went of uh, somewhat yeah. entertaining. Terrible. At the very least, My hopefully it was better than being in class. Something. Yeah. Uh, and you didn't spill too much water on yourself as you were going uh, around the track. I was trying to I have not had a chance to go to Costco yet. Saturday was my kid's prom, and I also got a tattoo. And then yesterday, what? it's on my TikTok. You'll have to wait till later. And then yesterday was Mother's Day, so I'm hoping I get a chance to go to Costco tonight after my soccer game. Uh, but we'll you play see. soccer? You play I, soccer? No, I play soccer. Ew! I play soccer. <laughs> Not sure how to feel about that. Like, one, but I mean, you soccer is really like soccer. I play in a soccer league where I run around and try to kick a ball. I was going to oh. like soccer. No, soccer is a sport that you know, yeah. kids play, and apparently old men. Oh. Again, once I get a chance to go to Costco, I will update this with whatever I can find that they have in stock, and then we'll go from there. Then, let's see, for you guys, let's see, where did we get to? 2014. Was that, was that the year you guys were born? Yeah, 29. You're right, we did get to 29. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, tomorrow he's going to have to, because tomorrow is all we're doing, is you guys have reading time. Oh, I know. Well, Wednesday we have quiz over the book through chapter 5. Tomorrow I'm giving you a chance to read all on your own, because at some point you have to do like readings. And then Thursday, Friday, we'll do some reading together, and then Monday we talk about end of the book, and then next Tuesday we have a test over the whole book. Because we only have 12 days left, and we're getting close yes. to the end, so because then, oh, right. know, at some point we have to do the whole reading on our own thing. Hi, Stella. It's so, wait, do we have like this week, and then next week, and then the week after that is like the three-day week? Good job. So so well, it technically you do. Um, the, we don't yeah, worry about it. Um, so this week and next week are only real school left. Yeah, you want to think about it that so, way. Uh, wait, what is school day? The last day of school in the morning. Yeah. In the morning? Friday. Yes, it's what's, like afternoon, but earlier in the day. What's field day? I don't like it. It's a thing you're going to find out about when we get closer to it. It's a day full of fields. See, we had hippies with you guys. We got to the Brian and Mark and how they look. Oh, today we're going to get a chance because he talked about the fact that he likes to do flirty stuff. Today we get to see Brian's riz in effect. Uh, he's going to go all flirty flirt. It's going to be awkward. Uh, we had the hippies and the peace symbol, the new shoes. We did this one with you guys. I uh, the, the hippies without their uh, the, the, the dogs out. Wow, they're just dogs. Let's see, we got to ooh, the hot wiring of car we did with you guys, then the fight between Curly Shepherd and them. And this we got to the beginning of chapter two. Who was the hippie? Tony! Randy. 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 My bad. How do you know Randy? Um, uh, from outside of whatever, uh, he was Bob's friend. There you know. go. Yeah, I'm he's getting my okay. And then the hippie house, which is where he says that a bunch of hippies were living and hanging out. We have another hippie. They're going to be talking about this, plays a role later in the book. And then they say that Mark is really into Warner Brothers cartoons. I looked up Warner Brothers cartoons and you can really see what they look like. Those are the Warner Brothers cartoons. And then we had talked about lame, which apparently Crippled. now applies to Cameron, because what does lame mean? Crippled. And so here in the book, what it says, his mom would like to adopt every crippled dog, or sorry, every lame dog she found. That means crippled, going all the way back to our unjust poem. <clears throat> and now we have multiple lame kids in this class. Lame kid. Well, I'm not any lame more. kid. Some of you guys are, you know, just the other kind of lame. Ugh. Boring kids. And then this is what we're going to get to. In the hospital, they're going to go down to the little snack bar area. Uh, and so it's set up a lot like an actual bar bar when they say a snack bar. So we are now on page 29, that big paragraph, where here is where he is going to chance to put all his riz out for effect. 
I took the elevator to the basement where the snack bar was. I sat on a stool at the counter. After sitting at the bar at Charlie's, I'd gotten used to it, leaving the menu over and over and thinking about all the food I'd get if I could. Oh, man, I love to eat. I could put away more food than anyone I knew. I was 5'10 at 16 and still growing. But I went through my lanky period at 14, and I had a good build, of which I was proud. I should have gone out for football, I guess, but it didn't much appeal to me. I liked neighborhood football games, but all that practice for the real thing it seemed like a bore to me. Besides, I knew I couldn't put up with a coach telling me how to play. I never have been able to accept authority. I don't know why. All right. I figure it's because of this cop, well, these two cops, they beat me up once when I was 13 years old. All right, I'd gone to the movies with these other guys, and I forget where Mark was, and we drank a fifth of cherry vodka and Coke and got drunk. A fifth is a way of referring to just a giant bottle of vodka. Uh, so Brian's saying that he drank a whole bunch of, and hopefully we know that vodka is an alcohol that we should not be drinking yet. It's and then Coca-Cola. Like Sprite, but with really bad effects. Yeah. The stuff tasted terrible, but I was a dumb kid. and I drank it just to show I was as super tough as the rest of them. When the movie was over, I was staggering around alone on the streets in the dark. Well, these two cops picked me up and drove me out to a hill on the other side of town, slapped me around, and then just left me there. I never forgot it. Now, it didn't stop me from drinking. But it sure ruined any respect I ever had for cops. Okay, yeah, sure, there are good cops somewhere. <clears throat> I've just never met any. Ever since then, I've made it a point to mouth off to cops. That's probably why I never met any good ones. So I was sitting there reading the menu when I heard a voice say, Can I take your order? And I looked up at this really cute chick. She gave me a big smile and said, Hi, Brian. Here. I was racking my brain trying to think where I knew her from. Oh. I mean, she did seem kind of familiar. So to stall for time, I said, yeah, I'm here to see my old lady. She's just getting over an operation. I didn't know you worked here. Oh, I just started this week, but you knew I just got back, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I said, about to go crazy trying to remember who she was. She had this groovy, long, dark hair with a sheen to it like charcoal. Long hair with bangs just drives me crazy. Um, I couldn't find a good picture of a waitress with dark hair, so just imagine that her blonde hair is dark hair. If you have trouble imagining it, just squint your eyes, and if you keep squinting enough, it gets dark. She had this groovy, long, dark hair with a sheen to it like charcoal. Long hair bangs just drive me crazy. There aren't too many chicks who can wear their hair like that and still look good. And she had these big, beautiful gray eyes. Dark gray with black eyelashes. And the eyelashes were really long, but they weren't fake. I'm a long practice study for girls. And I can tell about things like that. Gosh, you have grown. You must be a foot taller than when I saw you last. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's been a long time. If I'd grown a foot, it must have been. How you been doing? Oh, pretty good. I was lucky to get this job. Listen, can you give me your order? I'm not supposed to stand around and talk to customers. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. I'll have a hamburger and a Pepsi. She took my order and left, and I was about to lose my mind. She couldn't have been someone I dated. I mean, I date a lot of girls. But I was sure I could remember them if I saw them again. Anyway, she seemed friendly. After you break up with someone, she's not usually friendly. She seemed so familiar, I could have sworn I'd seen her recently. Whoever she was, I wanted to see her again. I'd already noted that she wasn't wearing a boy's ring around her neck, or any other sign that she was somebody's personal property. I'm in the habit of looking for things like that. I've gotten into some tight spots with boyfriends I didn't even know existed. A quick pause in case you guys aren't up on your old school dating methods. So, uh, for you can still get them today. I don't think they're quite as popular, but you can get what's called a class ring, 
uh, boys' class rings, and then the ones down here are like the girls' class rings. And then you would wear it as sort of like a show of your connection to the school. If you start dating someone, you would then trade class rings. Girls would give a dude the class ring, and then dudes would give a girl their class ring, and then the girl could wear their, the guy's class ring as a way of showing, like, you've got yourself a boyfriend. Problem is, boy fingers are typically big and thick and meaty, and girl fingers are all slim and petite, so they can't really wear them on their fingers without them, like, sliding on. So a lot of girls would wear them on a necklace, and that was your way of sort of, like, saying, I got myself a man. It was like the early version of social media where you would post like relationship status. So if you saw a girl with a ring, you'd be like, oh, step off, that girl's taken. No ring, you'd be like, ooh, let's go. Riz it up. So go. that's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Here's your hamburger. I looked up at her and she gave me this really great smile. The smile that lit up her face. I knew I'd seen that smile recently. And then it struck me who it was. And I was so surprised, I said it out loud. Kathy? Yeah, she said, almost as surprised as I was. Who'd you think it was? The last time I saw you, you had short hair and braces. I said, forgetting that a lady killer should never remind a girl of her gawky age when she was skinny and ugly, or fat and ugly, or short-haired with a mouthful of milk. Yeah, that's the truth. Brian, you mean you didn't recognize me? <laughs> no, I didn't. I couldn't see why that should shock her so much. Even back in the days of braces and short hair, we weren't exactly best friends. I'd never paid any attention to her. I just recognized you because you look so much like him and it when you smile. I'm going to take that as a compliment, she said, giving me my check. Eminem's a beautiful child. He has a beautiful smile to match his mind. Uh, yeah, he's a good kid, I agreed. She turned to go, and I said, wait, without thinking, so that when she turned, I stuttered a little. I, I mean, I haven't like, seen you in a while. I'd like um, to like talk to you sometime. I really wasn't living up to my self-image, and I never stutter. All right, she said, we'll talk sometime. I wanted to ask when, but didn't. You should never be too eager with chicks. That can get some ideas. I waited around for Mark, but he didn't show up, so I took the elevator back to Mom's floor. I went and looked in the room across from Mom's where that kid was supposed to be. I saw him all right, but no sign of Mark. That kid had been hurt bad. He had bandages around his head and across one eye, and both arms were in slings and stitches in his lower lip. <clears throat> hey, are you Brian? He looked at me out of his good eye. Mark said to wait here for him. He'll be back back. He went across the street to the drugstore and buy me some comics. I could tell from the way he talked that he came from a neighborhood like mine, which was likely. This was a charity hospital. Come on in, man. Pull up a chair. A charity hospital is when you don't have a whole lot of money and you go to the hospital, and they'll still take you no matter what. And the hospital that their mom's at is one that takes anybody because they don't have much money. So he's assuming this kid's in the same situation. Uh -huh. Uh, I got a brother. Ah, oh, there's. I did. And I didn't know what to say to him. You're Mark's brother. You don't look much alike. For a minute, I really felt good about Mark's telling this guy that we were brothers. I mean, of course we didn't look alike. Mark with his gold hair and strange gold eyes and slight, tense body, and me, big and husky, with dark brown hair and eyes. So I said, no, I guess we don't. Yeah, I got a brother. Older. We don't look much alike either. I looked around for a no smoking sign. Can I smoke in here? Sure, as long as you don't get caught. Would you mind giving me a few puffs? Okay. I lit up a cigarette and put it between his lips. When I took it back, he said, thanks. I haven't had a cigarette in a week. My name's Mike Chambers. Mine's Brian Douglas. Man, you look awful. What happened? I was beginning to be glad I'd come in after all. It must have been rough being kept in a hospital that gave you the creeps with nobody to talk to. I got beat up, he said with a wry smile. I couldn't believe it. I thought he'd been in a car wreck or something. What's the other guy look like? It's a long story. You got time for a long story? Sure. 
I really do like listening to stuff that's happened to other people. I guess that's why I like to read. Well, if it seems like I'm never going to shut up, just tell me. You and Mark are the first people I've talked to in a long time. There just ain't much to say to these nurses. I can see that. What can you say to nurses? And then we take out the doctor and replace the doctor with uh, Brian. And then we'll cross out the nurse. There we go. So here's where we're going to get the story about how this guy got beat up. Well, all right. I've always had this soft spot for chicks. I was always making like Sir Galahad, opening doors for him, complimenting even the homely ones. I beat out a lot of guys better looking than me, and they never could figure out why. But it wasn't just a line with me. I guess I'm a sucker. I've been taken a few times, like loaning money to chicks who come off the sob story. But I'll always believe the best about a girl until I'm proved wrong. That's my own hang up. Anyway, that explains the way I acted that night. The gang and me was hanging around the drugstore, and this black chick came in to buy some cigarettes. Now me, I just see a nice looking chick with really beautiful eyes, all black and inky soft. I guess I'm a little funny that way, because they just don't get me all upset. I mean, I can see a black guy and a white chick together, and that sure don't bother me. Like, most white guys can't stand to see that, like the gang. The minute she walks in, they get all tensed up because black anyone, chick or otherwise, it just don't happen to come around much where I live. I guess she worked downtown and got off late and just stopped in on her way to the bus stop. She told me that later. I don't remember too good now. Anyway, so she gets her cigarettes and starts the door when a couple of guys block her way. Now the gang I hang with is a pretty good bunch of guys. A lot of heart. Only a couple of wise apples in the group. But see, nothing much been happening, and they were bored, so they start picking on the chick, calling her Black Beauty and some other choice things. They were really getting rude, and I was feeling sorry for the girl. She kept her eyes down and just said, Let me buy, please, real soft line. And the guy started pushing her around, and not enough to hurt her, but enough to scare her plenty. She just gripped her purse with both hands and tensed all over like she was trying to keep from running, which was pretty smart. Running was just an invitation to be chased, and if she got caught, it wouldn't be in a lighted drugstore. Anyway, the old guy who runs the drugstore disappeared. He was scared silly of the gang. I don't know why. we never even done anything to him. And like when one of the guys grabbed hold of her and really got crude, I got fed up. I went over and said, Hey, let her go! Like I meant it. And they all looked at me for a while like they were trying to make up their minds whether or not to jump me. I mean, we don't usually go around beating each other up, but it has happened. They finally decided not to. My big brother, he's got a pretty big rep as a tough guy in our neighborhood. He's in jail now. That's why he don't come to see me. It was his rep, not mine, that stopped him, because I ain't ever been known as a tough guy. So they turned her loose and went back to reading comics, and I followed the girl outside. She was looking up and down the street, kind of desperate-like, and I knew she'd missed her bus. And I said, hey, um, girl, if you missed your bus, I, mean, I can give you a ride home. She just kept her eyes down. Finally, she said something, but brother, I'm not going to repeat it. I saw then and there, and she thought I had evil intentions. I don't blame her. Hell, if I'd had to take what she just did, I'd be sore and suspicious, too. So I said, look, I mean, I don't want to pick you up or anything. And she gave me a funny look, so I had to quit. No, no, not that you're not real cute or anything. I mean, you'll have to stay here like another hour to catch the next bus, and, and I'll be leaving, and I don't know what those other guys might do. She saw the logic in that, because it was getting dark. Not too many cops come around that area. It's kind of a deserted street. You know how cops are. There's a million over on the ribbon, making sure the nice kids don't kill each other or run each other down, while we can cut each other's throats and they don't give a damn. Finally, by the way, why is this kid in the hospital? He got beat up. Keep that in mind, that something's going to happen. Oh, this I know. Gonna get beat up. I know. She saw the logic in that because it was, oh, sorry. Finally, she said she'd let me drive her home. 
I had my old Ford parked in the drugstore parking lot. It's really my brother's car, but he said I could drive it any time he got busted, which is often. He's a pretty good guy, but if you've got a rep for fighting, somebody's always trying to take you on. The last time that happened, my brother busted a bottle over the guy's head. He got charged with assault with a dangerous weapon. He never used weapons before, but he finally got fed up with the whole routine. And it wasn't his first offense, so they sat on him kind of hard. Anyway, we got into my Ford, and I can see the poor kid is still scared. She sits hugging the door on her side like she's going to jump out any second. I got a couple of good looks at her. She's real slender. Looked like she sort of sway in the wind, and her hair was down to her shoulders. And it must have been straightened. She had on a yellow dress and yellow shoes, and she had her straw purse sitting on her lap, and she held on to it with one hand and the door handle with the other. She really was cute. I didn't know what a straw purse was, so I had to look that up. Uh, this is what a straw purse is in the way it's designed. And in a moment, he's getting ready to try and find a handkerchief, which is like a little bandana type thing that usually grandparents would have, like wipe your tears or blow their nose or something like that. So things I wasn't sure you knew about. No. She really want to stop. There you go. I started talking to her about just everything. Would her old lady chew her out because she was late? My old lady did. Man, they never liked anything you did, did they? But still, sometimes you couldn't get along without them. Did she go to school? I did, but boy, it was really a hell of a place to spend all day. I wanted to drop out, but the old lady said she'd kill me if I did. And I kept talking because well, that's what I do with animals when they're hurt and scared, and pretty soon they get over being scared. And I've got to hang up with animals, too. And I could tell she was beginning to calm down a little. At least she let go of the door handle. I even got her to smile once. I forget what I was saying. And then I said, Man, I'm sorry about what happened to you back there. And suddenly, she started to cry. Oh, man, that got me so shook. Nothing gets me shook like chicks crying. Mike stopped here. I gave him another drag on my cigarette. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I mean, chicks crying bore me. Now go on, Mike, finish your story. Well, I didn't know what to say to her. I finally said, hey, don't cry, which never does any good. She kept on sobbing, and now and then I'd catch a word or two. I got the idea that she was fed up with getting walked all over by white people. I can see that. I mean, I get fed up with getting walked over by the fuzz, teachers, my old man, the upper-class popular kids at school. So, I can see that. Brian, do you know my old man keeps my mother from coming to see me? He said I was a dumb kid for ever getting into this hospital. Anyway, this chick, she tells me about her problems. She uses some pretty bad language, but nothing I ain't heard before from white chicks. I finally pulled the car over at the curb and reached into my pocket. She sat up straight, got a little tight. What we stopping for, she says. And I said, I thought I had a handkerchief, but I guess I don't. And I pulled back out on the street. She looked at me for a minute. I kept staring straight ahead, and I could tell she was watching me. And then she said, thank you. I drove her home. She lived way out on the north side where most of the black kids live. You know where. It's a pretty lousy neighborhood. It's almost as bad as mine. As I pulled up in front of her house, and I could see a bunch of kids hanging around on her porch and in her yard. Well, here you are, I said, a little nervous. For somebody who'd been practicing in her mind how to get the door open, she was pretty slow about getting out. At least that's how it seemed to me anyway. I think she was tired out from crying so much. Then, there were all these black kids around my car. Some big guy opened the girl's door and pulled her out and said, What's the matter, Connie? What happened? tell that she'd been crying, and then they opened my door and dragged me out. Now it seemed like there was a hundred black faces staring at me. I guess it was really just about a dozen, but it seemed like a hundred. I just stood there, backed up against the car. Talk about scared? Man, was I scared. And to top it off, the chick had started crying again, so she couldn't talk. Mike paused here for a minute. He was staring off in the distance, and when he started talking again, it was slowly, like he was living the whole thing over again. And the big guy, 
came around to my side of the car. You hurt her, white boy? No, I said. And it didn't sound very loud, so I cleared my throat and said, No, I didn't! So loud that it sounded like I was shouting. It was real quiet. You could hear somebody's TV from down the street and a dog barking a block away and Connie soft sobbing. I could even hear my heart pounding in my ears. And the big guy said, really quiet like, What if we don't believe you? And I got so scared I was about to cry. And I said, you ask her, huh? Well, you just ask her. And the guy called across the car. Connie, what you want me to do with this white cat? And real soft, her voice was so soft, just like her eyes, she said, kill the white boy. Oh, and sure it. enough, they almost did. There was a long silence. I think Mike had forgotten I was listening. Then he took a long breath. <sighs> so, that's how I got here. I mean, I must be a dumb kid, like the old man says, because I still don't hate him, least of all Connie. I mean, I can almost see why she did it. <sighs> almost. I shook my head. Man, that's a rotten thing to happen to anybody. It sure is. Mark's voice came from behind me. He'd been standing in the doorway. I don't know how long. Come on, Brian. Here's your comics. He tossed a couple of monster comics on the bed. As we got into the elevator, Mark said, I'm inclined to agree with his old man. That is one stupid guy. You mean it? I've been thinking about Mike's story, and I could see his point about not hating the people that beat him up. Yeah, I mean it. Man, if anybody ever hurt me like that, I'd hate them for the rest of my life. I didn't think much about it, that statement then. But later I would. I still do. I think about it and think about it until I think I'm going crazy. So, with this Mike and Connie scene that happens, going all the way back to Shadow Club, the book that we read way back in the beginning of the year, I asked you guys about revenge and whether or not you guys were for getting revenge on people or if it was a thing that you had done. Here, that's pretty much what we're seeing. The book coming up is going to be a lot about the idea of revenge and getting back on people or forgiving people. Here, with the situation, does Connie hate Mike? I agree. I don't think she hates him at all. But she does hate somebody. Who does she hate? Not just his friends. Yeah. And the fact that people who have been mean to her, just like the greasers hated the socias, where you hate the popular kids when bothering you, or you hate your parents for yelling at you. For her, it has been this people of another race who have been mean and awful to her. And she wants to get revenge. So when it comes down to it, this was her way of getting revenge. Is it right? No. But being as that how much you guys all talked about wanting to get revenge, I'm hoping it's at least understandable. But the problem with revenge is, when you get revenge, what do they then have to do? And then what do you have to do? Yeah. And, it then, a and it starts getting them vast. What's going to happen? This shows you one version where someone gets revenge and then they do forgiveness instead because Mike's like, I completely understand. I don't hate him. I'm not planning on getting revenge. But that's not the way everybody takes. Some people are like, if you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you twice as bad. Mark is one of those people where if you hurt him, he's going to hurt you twice as bad. And in chapter 3... Someone is going to hurt Mark, and it's going to begin our whole cycle. So, with this, we still have time. So, as we get into chapter three, we're just going to get into the school dance. Um, and here's where now we get to see a little bit more of Brian's Riz. He's ooh, who is he going to ask to go with him to the dance? Kathy. There you go. This is where Kathy's going to come in. Ooh. And we get introduced to this guy, who you may remember. Pony Boy and oh, Android, which is going to be, uh, remember Curly Shepherd, the guy that got into the fight earlier? Yeah. And Brian said, I have a history with Curly's sister. Oh. This is Curly's sister. She's getting ready to show up in the story also. Wait, is Brian this one? Brian's the big guy in the middle. That's the one. Brian's the guy telling us the story. All right. Chapter 3. I'd been hunting all over town for a job. 
I really needed one, but they're not easy to come by if you're 16 years old with no experience and no contacts. I finally hit upon a great idea. I would ask Charlie for a job. After all, we were friends. He thought I was a smart kid, and having been one himself, he appreciated them. Besides, I figured I'd really dig working in a bar. Charlie's answer was short and to the point. No. I was sitting at the bar, smoking a cigarette, and trying to fight down my anger and disappointment. I'd been hitchhiking all over town for a week trying to get a job. Well, why not? I asked, as soon as I thought I could talk without blowing my stack. For one thing, you know how often the plainclothes cops stop in? You think they'd let a minor work in here? You're lucky that you can just come in and sit down. Besides, Brian, it gets rough in here late at night. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're a rough kid. They all think that. But you better just take my word for it that you'd be better off someplace else. Like where? There ain't no jobs in this town. And I've been all over. And don't think this crummy joint ain't last on my list. I was mad. Charlie didn't even get upset, though. He just grinned. Brian, you're an honest kid in most ways, but you lie like a dog. Take Mark. I wouldn't trust him around anything that wasn't nailed down. But I'd believe anything he said. I'd trust you with my wife, if I had one. i trust your actions, but I'd double-check most of your statements. You just think about it, and I think you'll come up with a reason why you haven't got a job before now. You just think about it. And for you guys, essentially, he's suffering from the choices that you make. When you set yourself up as a liar, people don't trust you. If they don't trust you, they don't really want you working for them. Same thing with Mark. You can't trust Mark. He won't lie to you, but he'll steal anything you put down. And so the same thing is it's hard to have people hire you if they can't trust you. Well, I was too mad to think about it right then, but I promised Charlie I would later. I listened to everything Charlie said because... He was really smart. He'd been a high school dropout, but he could subtract and add in his head quicker than a machine. And he also read almost everything I had, which was quite a bit of reading. Besides, he had it even rougher than me when he was a kid. And now, he had his own business, and was respected by the cops and the rough guys equally. Okay, if you trust me so much, why don't you let me borrow your car Saturday night? This was a shot in the dark. I really never expected Charlie to let me borrow his car, but I've been thinking about Kathy quite a bit. I'd even called her a couple of times from a payphone since we couldn't pay phone bills anymore. And there was a dance coming up on Saturday night that I wanted to go to, but I didn't have a car. Okay, Brian, you can borrow my car Saturday. Just bring it back with as much gas in the tank as there was when you took it. I almost fell off the bar stool. You mean it? Really? Charlie gave a short laugh. Yeah, I mean it. But you get into a wreck, and I'm going to swear you stole it. And I don't care if you let Mark drive it either. Any kid who's been hot-wiring cars and driving them for as long as he has without an accident, I'll trust with my car. I didn't know how to say thanks. I've always had trouble thanking people. I don't know why, but Charlie just gave me one of those twisted grins of his, like he knew what my problem was and couldn't care less. Oh, I'll come by and get a Saturday, I said finally. Charlie said okay, and I could tell he meant get out of here before I changed my mind. So I got. I wanted to get to a phone and call Kathy. For all I knew, she already had a date. She didn't, thank God, but she did ask me where I was going to get a car. A friend's loaning me his. We may be double dating with Mark. You remember Mark, don't you? Who could forget him, she said. And something gave me a funny feeling. Something about the way she said it, it gave me a funny feeling. Is this a dressy dance, or a dance dance, or what? Casual. Pants would be okay. It's just the school gym. Maybe we could go get a Coke afterward? But I was thinking, maybe we'll stop by the park afterward, which is just the way I think. Uh, meaning that um, he wants to cuddle. Mark was surprised when I told him who I had a date with. Kathy? Eminem's sister. Dude, how old is she? Fifteen or sixteen, I guess. Hey, you want a double date? Charlie's loaning me his car. I said this casually, like Charlie loaned me his car every day of the week. Mark wasn't fooled. He never was by me. No kidding. So how'd you manage that? 
I just shrugged. The truth was, I still didn't know how I'd manage that. Well, man, I can't double with you. I already told some guys I'd go stag with them. I thought you would too. Shoot, you haven't taken out a girl since you broke up with Angela Shepard. Yeah, well, if you'd gone with Angela for a while, you'd be sour on girls too. Man, I hate that chick. It's too bad she can look so good and be so rotten, Mark said sympathetically. He never once said, I told you so. He tried to tell me a long time ago that Angela was no good, but I hadn't paid any attention. It always seemed like Mark knew the score before I did, but it didn't do me any good. I wouldn't listen to him. I had to find out things for myself. Who all are you going with? We were in the kitchen doing dishes, and Mark didn't particularly care for washing dishes, but I just couldn't stand a bunch of dirty dishes piled up in the sink. Terry Jones, Williamson, Curtis, and I'm glad I'm not going with you. I can't stand that Curtis kid. Come on, Brian. He's a real nice guy. What'd he ever do to you? He thinks he's so good looking, that whole family's conceited. Uh, by the way, who is the Curtis kid he's referring to? That would be Pony Boy. Pony Boy is the Curtis kid. Um, tomorrow, my goal is I'm not reading out loud to you. Your checkpoint is going to be the end of chapter five. If you want to put on your post-it note, you turn pages. It's all the way to page 88 from where we are now. But it goes by pretty quick with what we have going in there. It's like 37 pages. Um, to give you a little preview of things we have coming up, uh, in chapter four, they are going to do a little thing where they talk about politics. Uh, Democrats and Republicans and stuff like that. Thing. I feel the same way. I'm a Democrat. Go you. Uh, and then we find out that Mark is going to hotwire a car again. This time, though, Mark gets caught hotwiring the car, which is not much of a spoiler. You'll find out when we get there. Someone dropped off a separate sink. There's your separate sink. And. Getting into chapter five, I'll talk more about this one tomorrow because there's a whole bunch of things coming up there too. And I'll stop babbling there.